Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and today I'm going to show you how to make a little bit more room on your hard drive or SSD. Keep watching to find out how. Okay, so in today's video, we're going to be going through some various ways of uh, getting a little bit more room on your hard drive or your SSD on your Windows 10 computer. Now, in real life, it's pretty simple. If you want to make a bit more room, all you do, get the rubbish, throw it in the bin, and empty the bin. Now, the principles are pretty much similar within a Windows 10 PC. You've got a lot of rubbish in there. Most of it, you generally end up putting in the recycle bin, but there's lots of other bits which just get fragmented around, and you lose track of them. So let's go to the computer and I'll show you a few ways of getting rid of some of that clutter. Okay, so on your Windows 10 PC, there's a various things that you can do. So the first one, and probably the easiest one, is the recycle bin. Just empty that sucker. If you're not too sure what's in it, you can right click on it, or you can double click on it, and you can choose open and see what files are in there. You can have a quick look to see if there's anything you actually do want. And uh, no, we're pretty happy we can get rid of all those things. Options. You can click on Recycle Bin Tools and you can empty the recycle bin. Or you can right click on the bin and choose Empty Recycle Bin that way. So let's do it the simple way. And you do get the uh, confirmation. So do you want to delete multiple items? Hell yeah. Okay, so that's the first one on the list. That's a pretty simple one to do. Now, another option, pretty simple and quick way of doing it, is in the Windows search bar. Just type in percent temp percent and this will take you to your home drive temporary folder and this is a list of all your temporary folders which are in use at the moment by windows and have been left behind some of them will be actually be in use so if we look at the date modified we probably will see some with today's date on and today is the 28th so chances are the ones with the 28th on we won't be able to delete manually so what we can do from anything previous so from the 26th we just scroll down Highlight the first one, go to the bottom, press the shift key, and then press the one at the bottom, and then we can right click and choose delete. Now sometimes when you do this, you may get an error message because the files are in use, but we'll give it a go and see what happens. And as I thought, because that one is actually in use, we can't do it. So you can click try again, sometimes they'll go, chances are they won't. So let's skip that one, and there we go. So that's got rid of some of our temporary files, but unfortunately we filled up our recycle bin again. So we'll have to end up emptying that one again at a later date. But at least we know where they are when it's time to get rid of them. So the next one is to try and actually use some of the tools built into Windows to remove some of these clutters. So let's type in disk for disk cleanup. And we want to use the disk cleanup app. So we'll click on that. And at this point, you get to choose which drive you want to actually clean up. So if you've got multiple drives, so in my particular machine, I've got a C drive, which is my Windows drive, and I've also got an additional backup drive, which is my new volume, D. So you can choose which one you want to do. To be honest with you, it doesn't really make much difference which one you choose to begin with, because you can change it later on. But for this particular purpose, I'm just going to choose the C drive, as that's what most of you will probably be wanting to do. So all we do, hit OK. And this is disk cleanup for the C drive. So there's some of the options that we can do. So we've got downloaded program files, temporary internet files, Windows error report, shader cache, etc., etc. Now actually the DirectX shader cache is one is worth deleting every now and then if you're getting issues with games. That can actually help quite a bit. We've got things like delivery optimization files. So we can go through and just select whichever ones we want to. Downloads is another one we can do. That one is a little bit different, which we'll go into in a little bit. But so we've got recycle bin, so we can empty that again. Temporary files, some of the ones which we've left behind, it'll try and remove. If it can, it'll just skip them. And we've got the thumbnail. So let's go ahead and do that. If you want to, you can kind of uh, add on downloads as well. But I would first of all check what is actually in your downloads folder before you do this. So if we do that now, if we open up the system and we go into downloads. And there's, uh, there's a couple of programs actually I want to keep. So the Razer Cortex installer I want to keep. Uh, the Ryzen Master is quite useful to keep, and actually most of those are pretty handy to keep. So I'm going to actually not bother clicking downloads on mine. It's only 169 megabytes, so it's not a massive amount. So we'll leave that as it is. But obviously, if you want to get rid of yours, feel free to put a tick in there, and you can go ahead and remove it. So if we click on OK now, it'll say, are you sure you want to permanently delete these files? Now, obviously, these are deleted permanently, so if there's anything in your system you're unsure of, 
don't click it, click cancel, but I'm pretty happy, so I'm gonna go ahead and click on delete files. So under the disk cleanup utility, it will get rid of the unnecessary files, or at least the ones it can do. And as you can see at the bottom there, it says cleaning, and it tells you which part it's actually on. Some of this will actually take a little while, but there we go. It's actually done it, and it's been quite quick. And it's closed down the program, so we're ready to carry on using Windows. But we actually want to go back into there, so let's open up disk cleanup once more, because there's a little bit more we can do in here. So again, we'll click on OK. And... If we go to disk cleanup, we've also got the option to clean up system files. Now these can actually take up a ton of room. So let's look at clean up system files. Again, we get to choose which drive and we'll choose C once more. And it'll go through and I'll do a quick scan. And this is the one where you really, really are gonna potentially regain an absolute ton of space. So as you can see, Windows Update Cleanup, that's gonna remove almost four gigs of space, which is absolutely huge. So we'll get rid of that one. We've got the Windows Defender antivirus. This is the old virus signature, so we can get rid of that. Downloaded program files, we've got none, but you may have more. Temporary internet files, again, we can do that. System error and dump files, we might as well get rid of those if uh, we don't need them. That's almost, uh, almost a gig there. Get rid of this, error reports, all that kind of stuff. Chance we're never gonna need it. Shader cache we've already done, but again, you can tick it if you want to. Delivery optimization files, if you've got any, feel free to do that. Device driver packages, downloads will leave out again on this particular instance. You've got your language resource files, all that kind of stuff, recycle bin. Temporary files, we've still got that 3.41 megabytes, which unfortunately we can't get rid of because they are in use by Windows. And we've got some more thumbnails. So at this point, we've stand to gain almost five gigs of space, which if you're actually trying to do a Windows update and you can't because you've got no room, this could probably be the difference between you having to buy a new hard drive and being able to do your Windows update. Now, if you have got previous versions of Windows installed or backups of them in System Restore and things like that, you'll see even bigger files here so you can get rid of the old Windows files. So anyway, we'll click on OK and we'll get rid of some more files that we can. So click on Delete Files and again we go through a similar process. Okay, so that's done, so now we can move on to the next one. Okay, so you'd probably notice there's a slightly different desktop at the moment. Now, the reason for this is because I recorded another part of this video, and unfortunately, for some reason, it didn't quite work out as intended. So, to break up the video, here we go. In the disk cleanup, this is a bit I was about to miss out in the other edit of this video. So, we've also got the more options section. Now, in more options, this does actually bring up a lot more stuff that you can remove or make room with. As I'm gonna go into a little bit later in the video, there's the programs and features bit, which is another easy way of getting into it. Or you can do it from the control panel to get in the classic menu. But this is one where you can really make a little room. So system restore and shadow copies. So if you do any Windows updates or anything like that, you will find older copies of Windows or shadow volume copies that are backed up on your system. Now you can change the size of this. So you can set so certain percentages. So if we take a look at cleanup for now, and it'll say there, are you sure you want to delete all but the most recent restore point? So basically, Windows will keep restore points up to a predetermined size of your hard drive. So 10%, 20%, 50%, whatever it is you choose, uh, you can do that in the system restore section. But if you actually click on this, this will get rid of all but the latest one. So again, going back to what we were saying earlier about making room for, if you're trying to do a Windows update and you haven't got quite enough room for it, this is actually a perfect way of doing it and also a very non-risky or low risk way of doing it. So by deleting all but the very latest system restore points, you should be fine. So if your Windows update doesn't go as intended, then you can always roll back to the previous version or the version that you're in now. So anyway, we'll click on delete and we'll get rid of some of the older versions. And there we go, that's it. Pretty straightforward and pretty painless. So back to the uh, scheduled programming. Okay, so that's done, so now we can move on to the next one. So what we can do is also go into System Settings. And all you want to do is, at the top in the Windows Settings, is type Storage and go into Storage Settings. So in Storage Settings, we've got tons of more options. So there is something you can do, which is Storage Sense, which you can automatically turn on if you wanted to. Um, actually, I think I will turn it on just so we can take a look and see how it runs. So storage sense and turn it on and then you can configure it. So if you've got low disk space, it will automatically do things, uh, clean up files, etc. And if there's files in your recycle bin that you've forgotten about and they're over a certain amount of time, so one day, 14 days, 30 days or 60 days, it will automatically uh, delete temporary files and 
also the files in the recycle bin. Also, you can uh, choose it to delete files in my downloads folder if they've been there for over a certain time. Personally, I probably won't do that myself because some of the things in my downloads folder I do wish to keep. But again, if you want to keep that nice and clean, then uh, you can set it to one day or 14 days or whatever you want to. Once you've done that, you can click on the Clean Now button if you wanted to, or you can just rely on it to do it uh, when it has load this space or at the default thing that you've added here. So again, 14 days, 30 days, let's set it to 14 days to get rid of temporary files. So that actually is going to keep things generally pretty good. So another option we can do in here, which is actually a really good one, is you can change where new content is saved. So if you have got two drives, say for instance you've got a C drive and a D drive, or you've got a separate partition on your hard drive, you can change where new content is saved. So a default option in here. So new apps, new documents, music, photos, films, and offline maps, that kind of thing. So if you're, say for instance for documents, and you've run out of space and you've got some big documents coming in, or big music, then you can basically just change it to your new volume or your other disk label. So again, if you want to take advantage of that, you can do. You go on New Volume and you click Apply, then it'll save all your music to the D drive. There is another way of doing this within the older Windows slot, which we'll take a look at as well also, but you can do it in here if you wish. Another thing you can do as well, you can optimize your drive. So years ago, defragmenting a drive was uh, very important. A lot of the time now, Windows will actually use the trim command on SSDs and NVMe style storage devices. So we didn't really need that these days. But if you're using an older hard disk drive and you want to optimize your drive, then this is where to do it. So this is the disk defragmenter. It's now called Optimize Drives. And as you can see, you can click on a hard drive. You can analyze it to see how fragmented it is. So let's click on Analyze and we'll see what the drive is like. And currently we're at 0% fragmented, which is pretty good. That's what we want it to be. And with the solid state drive, you can do a similar thing. You can just optimize it. I'm not going to do it because that can cause to premature wear, but generally Windows would run the trim feature every now and then anyway. And as you can see, it's been one day since it was last run. So we don't have to do anything there, but again, you can if you want to. That you actually can change the settings as well. So if you want to actually reduce the wear on your drive, then you can choose the schedule. So monthly for SSDs, um, daily for hard disk drives if you wanted to, or weekly. If you leave your PC on overnight, daily is probably a good thing to do. And Obviously, you can increase the task priority if it misses the schedule for some particular reason. Again, and also you can choose a drive. So if you only want to do a specific drive, so we don't want to do our system reserve, we just want to do our mechanical drive, which is the D drive, you can do that. Again, lots of options. It's a personal preference, really, what you want to do. Like I said, personally, I wouldn't set it to optimize your C drive or an SSD or an NVMe if you can, just to try and eliminate any additional wear on the drive. So another way of moving our documents, so if we want to, say for instance, our music folder, and we want to relocate it, so as you can see, our C drive is actually pretty okay, but it's only a 250 gig drive, and it's about half, or getting towards half full. So maybe we want to transfer that onto our D drive. So what you can do, say for instance on music, you right click on it, and you can choose properties. And actually then what you can do is choose location, and you can actually move the drive. So say for instance, you want to move it to the D drive, all you do is choose your D drive. If you want to, you can create a new folder, or you can just click on select folder and it will do it straight to the root of the D drive. Again, this can be really useful. Uh, I have done it with my games folder and I have previously, previously done it with my music folder, as you can see there. So actually can be quite a good option to do. You can do that with all of these. So if you want to move any of them, you can relocate them to any drive you want to. Again, not so much freeing up space, but more managing of space on that particular one. Another good one is to disable your hibernation. Now, Windows Hibernation will use roughly about 75% of your physical RAM to create a hibernation file. So if you've got a 16 gig system, then you're gonna be using about somewhere between 10 and 12 gigabytes of storage on your main Windows drive as temporary file storage for the HyberSys file. And to get rid of that, so all we need to do is open up PowerShell. And you can right click on this and choose Run as Administrator agree to that and all we need to do this is really really super simple all we need to do is type in power cfg.exe space then a forward slash and hibernate space off and there we go so that's turned hibernation off and will also automatically on reboot will get rid of the hibernation file if you want to do that and then you want to turn it on at a later date all you do, you can type in exactly the same thing, but it's pretty straightforward. You can type in hibernate on, 
and that will re-enable it. So let's go back in and we'll turn that off because we don't need hibernation. The downside of hibernation, if you do stop it, is you will get slightly slower boot times in certain configurations. But with an SSD, you should find, to be honest with you, that is uh, pretty, pretty snappy anyway. Unless you're trying to benchmark your startup times, it's not gonna make a great deal of difference. So there's a few uh, quick and easy ways of uh, freeing up that valuable space on your Windows C drive or moving files from your Windows C drive to a D drive or a separate drive, be it USB, mechanical, whatever it may be. Really useful, again, if you're trying to do Windows updates, especially with the big updates that are coming, which are gonna be pretty, pretty big files, it's always a good idea to clear up a little bit of room before you go ahead and start doing these updates. Also, what you can do is if you've got any older programs or files in your computer, Say for instance, you've got a, a computer which you've been using for many years and you've installed lots of programs over the years and there's bound to be something in there that you don't actually use. So if you want to get rid of some of those files, that's a really easy way of doing it. All you need to do is to go into the control panel, the old school control panel. And to do that, all you need to do is type in or start typing control panel and click on okay. And then we go into programs and then we can go into uninstall a program. And this will give you a list of all your programs you've got currently installed. Now, I find personally the best way of doing this is to do it by installed on, and then you can see what the oldest ones are. This is a relatively fresh install. It's been on for about six, uh, yeah, about five or six months. So it's actually relatively clean. There's nothing on there that I can see that I don't actually use or need. Some things you'll probably get rid of, like Macri and Reflect. I'm not currently using that. I don't have a need for it currently. So I could get that to free up a little bit of room, but it's always handy. Again, look down through, see if there's any programs in there which you either don't know the name of or you've not used. And generally it's gonna be pretty safe to get rid of it if it's a slightly older file. Also, if you're not too sure which are the big ones or the small ones, then you can click on the size icon and then you can sort them by size. Now the uh, AMD software and Nvidia software are also good ones to check. So what you can do is go into your C drive again and go into either your AMD or Nvidia folders and you'll find there's tons and tons of stuff in here. So the drivers do hang out in various different places. So if you go into the Adrenaline folder, you may find there's various packages which have previously been installed. Lots of drivers, all that kind of stuff which are lying around. You may find that you can get rid of them. Again, if you've changed a graphics card and you previously had an AMD card and you've now got an Nvidia or vice versa, you might find that you can just get rid of those AMD files and folders, but ideally do it from the add remove program section just so you don't accidentally delete something that you actually need. Again, you can actually use uh, something like the display driver uninstaller, which uh, there'll be a link to up in the top right hand corner of the screen. And you can see how to uninstall a graphics card and remove the drivers there. That actually will also give you quite a lot of room back. So again, lots of options you can do to uh, really, really tighten down your Windows installation size and try and make it as small and as compact as possible. If you've got any comments or suggestions, let me know in the comments. What is your favorite program for removing software? Some people tend to use things like CCleaner, which uh, is a very, very popular tool, but there's hundreds and hundreds of other ones on there. So if there's a particular one that you like or you find work very, very well, do let us all know in the comment section. We'll be really looking forward to hearing those views. But that pretty much wraps things up for this video. So if you've got any comments or questions, like I said, put them in the comment section below. In the meantime, I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.